Hey guys, in this screencast, we will be talking about cryptographic hash functions. Now, these are used in many places, including cryptocurrencies, password security, so on and so forth. One important point is that these are not same as hash functions you used in hash tables. These have certain properties that the former doesn't. Now, this won't be a detailed mathematical treatment on cryptographic hash functions. This would be just what they are. So suppose this is our hash function. Now what we do is we pass in some text and what we get out of it is a string of fixed length and we call this string a digest or a hash. Uh, now what I meant by uh, fixed length is that even if the size of the text, the input text is changed, the output text or the digest or our hash would be of same length for a particular hash function. Now, it should be easy to convert the input to its digest, but not vice versa. So, it should be very, very hard to actually receive any information from the digest about the input. So, it's like we cannot get anything out of it, not even its size or whether it's number or text, nothing. Now, I'm not saying that it's impossible. Uh, theoretically, it's possible, but certainly it's not feasible practically because what you have to do is you have to check each and every value that what kind of text or input matches the digest after being hashed. Now, the digest should look random. What I mean by this is that if we change a small part in the input text, uh, the whole digest should change. Uh, now, I don't mean that as a rule that every character would change, but it should look random, right? Like there should be no pattern between changes in text and changes in the digest. So what I mean by this is, let's say we have a text hello and the digest for this is 14BE. Now, I just have taken a random number and letters. This should not be a digest in the real world because in the real world, digests are quite long. So, let's say I change the O to P. Now, it should not be the case that the B changes to C or it changes with a pattern. The, what should be the case is that it changes to a, another completely random value like 2, 5, let's say A and 1. Now, two inputs should not have the same digest value. Like T1 should result to D1 and T2 should result to some other D2. Uh, when two values like T1 and T2 end up with the same digest, this thing is called a collision. Now, our goal is to make our hash functions collision free. Now, there are proofs that there may be collisions in hash functions, but finding a duplicate is practically impossible. Last but not the least, the hash functions should not be computationally expensive too much. They should be computationally efficient because we need them in practical applications. Now, some popular examples of hash functions may be SHA-256. Uh, it had a precursor SHA-1, uh, but it had problems. And there was MD4, which is now MD5. I mean, a better version of MD4 is MD5. MD4 obviously had faults. But there is one thing, guys, that if someone is smart enough, they may come up with a solution to beat these hash functions. There is no guarantee that they won't be ever broken. I am not talking about brute forces. I am talking about if someone is smart enough and they find a cheat so that they can find out the text from the digest without doing a big brute force attack on this thing. There is one more thing that I would like to point out that not only we can hash some text, but we can hash any kind of data. I use text till now in the video for the ease of explaining. 
In fact, we can hash any file and that has a lot of applications. With this, we can track if a file has been changed because even if a file has been changed a bit, the hash would change completely. Now, you might have seen MD5 checksum while downloading a file. Now, this is necessarily the MD5 hash of the file. Now, this is to validate if the file is corrupt or not. This will be it for today's video. If you learned something new, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Put down what videos do you want from this channel in the comments. Guys, stay curious, keep coding and thanks for watching.